currently this PCA 2024 uh, in Orlando, Florida has broken all the PCA records previously as far as attendees. Um, so and that's we, over 100 years. That, this is, that's insane crazy of the, the caliber of painters that are coming up in the field. Uh, the quantity and the, and the quality is just insane great. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I want to be careful saying top 1% of top 1% because I think that can scare some people because it's not necessarily about the biggest painting companies or the most revenue, but it's, it's that 1% of mindset, right? Who has an open mind, is ready to learn, is ready to, to engage in business and, and distance themselves from becoming just, you know, being considered just a painter. That's how I see it. It's like, yeah. it's, not, it's not size of business, but it's what's inside your brain it's, and how you use that. It's both, it's both what's going on here. You do got the top 1% of the 1% of the business owners here. The, the business owners that are making 30, 40, $50,000 a year, or maybe they're just making 30 or $40,000 a year. Um, it is both parties that are attending here, and it is definitely 100% mindset. Um, and everyone here has the mindset of open and learning and growth. And uh, yeah, we're all here together. and. Uh, enjoying it. Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more, everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What's up everyone, Michael Hickman, founder of PainterGrowth.com. I'm here with the Painter Growth Podcast in person on site with Mr. Ron Adams, Paint Tigers out of California. Ron, how's the expo been for you? Uh, expo 2024 has been freaking freaking amazing. Freaking You heard it here first, folks. So uh, what has been like the number one thing that you have taken away? Not even just like out of tactics or what's, what are you going home with from expo? Uh, the sales, the marketing, um, all this stuff is great. And all these bright, bra uh, brain melds are, are fantastic. But what I take home from these expos are uh, the relationships, the networking, uh, the long-term communication we're going to have months and months and months past this expo. Yeah. This is my first expo. All right. And I was pleasantly surprised at how many amazing conversations I've had since being here. We don't have very many, po any podcasts that I've done here yet because I've been too busy making real connections with people, right? Yeah. Too busy running left, yeah. right, center. Um, it's awesome. It's an awesome community. I can't believe that the painting industry has such an, has such an incredible community that gets together. Yeah, so uh, here at the PCA, it's the top 1% of the top 1% of the painters in the industry. Um, and currently, this PCA 2024 uh, in Orlando, Florida, has broken all the PCA records previously as far as attendees. Um, so and that's we, over 100 years. That, this is, that's insane crazy of the, the caliber of painters that are coming up in the field. Uh, the quantity and the, and the quality is just insane great. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I want to be careful saying top 1% of top 1% because I think that can scare some people because it's not necessarily about the biggest painting companies or the most revenue, but it's, it's that 1% of mindset, right? Who has an open mind, is ready to learn, is ready to, to engage in business and, and distance themselves from becoming just, you know, being considered just a painter. That's how I see it. It's like, yeah. it's, not, it's not size of business, but it's what's inside your brain it's, and how you use that. It's both, it's both what's going on here. You do got the top 1% to 1% of the business owners here. The, the business owners that are making 30, 40, $50,000 a year, or maybe they're just making 30 or $40,000 a year. Um, it is both parties that are attending here, and it is definitely 100% mindset. Um, and everyone here has the mindset of open and learning and growth. And uh, yeah, we're all here together and uh, enjoying it. So you're out of California. So yep. you flew like four and a half hours to get here. I did. And so oh my God, let me tell you about that trip. All right, so we flew American Airlines. Uh, took us about four hours to fly here. And then when we landed here in Orlando, we had a bomb threat. Um, at the airport. And so we were on lockdown for an additional three hours what? at the baggage claim area. And so after that three hours, they unlocked it for everyone to get out of there, but you just couldn't take your luggage. So uh, now we're waiting outside with no luggage and we're waiting for our Ubers and all the traffic to come back online. And that took another hour. So that whole trip from LA to here took me eight hours to get to my room with no luggage. Wow, bomb threats. Yeah. That's no fun. Yeah. So in, in Cali, what city are you in? Los Angeles. LA, okay. You do, Tanner t told me you do about 2 million a year? Uh, 1.5. 1.5. So tell me about that. So you're 1.5, you're the sales rep? Correct, and we have sales. We okay. have sales. You have a sales guy too? Yep. We have okay, couple. very cool. And then, and then production side, do you have PMs? Uh, we do not have PMs. We have uh, subcontractors and they PM their own jobs. Okay, wicked. So that keeps things pretty simple. Yep. What do you feel is important for a up and coming contractor to know to be able to sell over a million dollars by themselves? Um, what's important for them to know to sell a million dollars by themselves? How can a contractor go from someone, say they've been doing 500K a year for a little while, they want to make that million dollar jump. 
right? What are, the, what are some of the things that they should know when it comes to the sales aspect of it in order to make that jump? It's about relationships. Um, it's a relationship between you and your vendors. It's a relationship between uh, you and your neighbors. It's a relationship between uh, you and the Facebook, um, the Facebook communities. It's not just you advertising on Facebook, but in your neighborhood Facebook communities. You can advertise there. That alone will take you over half a million dollars. Yeah, so that takes you half a million. Yep. Right? So, so making that jump to a million though, like have you had to systemize anything in your sales process or, or average job size or close rates? Like what does your sales system look like for you is like one person selling to be able to close a million bucks. Have an automated system. Uh, so Paint Tigers, uh, we have an automated sales system. Um, we base all our, our sales off of square footage. Uh, we have a basic package, a premium package, an ultimate package. Um, and our system is nice and simple. So we bring a, a fresh salesman in. They can learn our process within a week. And they're out there selling $18,000 jobs within a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how about... How about when it comes to training a sales rep and, and, and tactics and, and process and system, do you have a way to like bring a homeowner through an in-home estimate and, and walk away with a quote? Or are you we do. Our, our salesmen uh, do learn a script, um, but we, we just use the script as a guideline. Uh, we want our salesmen, uh, we want our whole team to just be natural. And you're, you're there to serve the homeowner at the highest possible level. We're not there to, um, we're not there to, to sell them if they don't want to be sold. If they want a price, here's a price. Um, and we're just, we're just here to serve them at the highest possible level, what, whether it's with us or with somebody else. What are some of the things that you do? Because in California, there's a lot of, you know, like illegal immigrants and, and unlicensed painters coming in. What, do, sorry about the background noise, guys. <laughs> what do you do to differentiate yourself from those low bidders and charge premium prices? Um, we, we position ourselves as the only one, not the best one. We're the only one. We're the only one in Southern California that it does exteriors only. We're the only one in Southern California that's a licensed general contractor. We're a licensed painting contractor. We're a licensed structural engineer. We're a licensed glazing door window contractor. Um, we're the only ones that do full stucco, carpentry, and painting. And we're, we're the only ones. Um, so we're, we don't position ourselves as the best. We position ourselves as the only one. Okay. Is it, is it like, how? Is it true? Like you are the only person that does the only company that does all of those things? We're, we are the only, we, well, yes, it is true. We are the only company that's a licensed general contractor, licensed structural engineer, okay. licensed painting contractor. We're the only painting company that does a full renovation on the exterior only. So we do you, not go into interiors. Okay. Do not call us to paint a bedroom. Do not call us to paint the interior of your house. Yeah. That's not us. We specialize in exteriors only. So one thing I, I like about that, so finding a niche, yep. right? You find a niche and you really want to explore that. So like, if you compare that to my business, we're business coaching for painting contractors. Okay. Right. And so we've seen a lot of success in, in that. But if we came in and we said we do, we do business coaching for anybody, we wouldn't be nearly the size we are because like if you try to be everything to everyone, you're going to end up being nothing to anybody. Yep. So we picked the niche. We picked painters because we know it, you know, but that's neither here nor there. But so you picked exterior. What are some of the jobs you've had to turn down? Like what's an interior job that maybe you turned down that like it kind of hurt to turn down? We turn down interior jobs every single day. And uh, it, it takes a lot of courage to turn down the interior jobs. Um, my previous paint companies I owned in, in the past, uh, we were general painters. We painted interiors, we painted exteriors, we done epoxies, uh, we done drywall repairs, we done full skim coats. Um, so nowadays that we're a niche as paint tigers, um, it, it takes a lot of courage just to the niche down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the scalability is unreal. Like all our, our subcontractors, it's just rinse and repeat. They just do exterior after exterior after exterior. And, uh, and we just use limited amount of products. We just use exterior products. Um, and, and the sub crews just and you get better same. pricing on it. We get excellent pricing. We get yeah. probably, yes, we get excellent, excellent. One pricing. of the things that, uh, yeah, like, you know, I'll have a client come to me and they'll say, my business is doing great. I'm completely off the tools, except if I get a cabinet job or except on the trickier project, or I'm completely off the tools, except when we get a little bit of carpentry, then I gotta come in. Then I'm like, dude, why don't you just stop accepting those jobs? Yep, <laughs> right? 100%. That's what it just comes down to, is like, pick your niche, and you have to say no to grow. Yep, um, pick your niche, uh, it's absolutely true. Now I'm fortunate, I live in Southern California where we can do exteriors year round, uh, where someone in Michigan probably can't do exteriors year round, but they can do interiors year round, or they can do cabinets year round, and be the only one that does cabinets year round, or be the only one that does interiors year round. But being the only has been uh, a lot more profitable for me than being, than being classified as the best. Being the only is more profitable. How long have you been in business? Uh, I've been in the trades over 30 years. Okay. Uh, Paint Tigers is two years old though. Oh, cool.
What made you decide to start a company after so many years? Um, I've retired a couple of times. Um, I've owned the San Diego Paint Co the San Diego Paint Company, the California Paint Company. Um, for me, I need a purpose in life, and I need a scorecard as a man. Um, I need something to wake up for every morning. And my wife, she's the other way around. She likes taking care of the nest. She likes making it pretty, like it smell good, uh, making sure everyone in the nest is taken care of. Me as a man, I I need I need a purpose to wake up for in the morning. You're not a you're not a sit back and golf kind of guy. Oh no, hell no. Yeah, I totally can I can totally dig that. Yeah. Um, so what's so you you 1.5 mil or one and a half mil after yep. two years? What's what's next? No, what's after the after the first year we're 1.5. No, okay. we just started our second year. Oh, okay, excellent. So what's next? What's the three year BHAG? So our short term goal is two million, and our long term reach is three million. Okay. Um, what does that allow you to do? Uh, it's just a growth, just a scorecard we're talking about. Uh, me as a, being a man, I just want having goals, having, making progress, having, having a scorecard, having a purpose in life. Yeah, yeah, and we we love what we do, and we're very uh, we're very very good at it, and uh, we get to enjoy it every single day. We get to bless our subcontractors, we get to bless our neighbors, we get to go out there and do what we do, and, and be fantastic at it. It's nice having direction and impact, and and just like yeah, like you said, something to wake up for, something to keep you pushing forward, keeping you young. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm in the third quarter of my life, and I got uh, I, let me as soon as I finish this third quarter, I'll go into the fourth quarter, and then we'll. We'll talk about sunsetting, but that's not for not a few more years. Not slowing down yet. Not yet. Well, hey, man, thanks for coming on, and I uh, wish you all nothing but success I appreciate and happiness. You, I appreciate you. Thanks, dude. Stay out there and keep helping the painters. What's up, everyone? Michael Hickman, round two of the Rapid Fire Painter Growth Podcast. We're here at the PCA Expo in Orlando, Florida. And we have Ocala resident. Yes. House painter. House drip painter. jobs owner. Yeah. Automation signer upper. That's right. Tanner Mullen. Yeah. What's your favorite part about Expo so far? Oh man, um, the networking, um, the camaraderie, getting to meet people that I knew online but now know in person, deepening relationships, uh, but just the exposure and the mindset shift. You know, when you see people that are doing what you are aspiring to do and then coming to you and saying, yeah, man, I did that and that was easy or this is how I did it. You know, it just shortens the learning curve, helps you believe, gives you hope um, and really just fires you up. Yeah. Like I come, I come both ways, right? Like. I come as the painting contractor wanting to grow my painting business, but I also come as the vendor wanting to encourage people to sign up for drip jobs. So it's a yeah, unique you have blend. the unique you have the un unique position that not many people have where they're they're both an exhibitor and an attendee. Yeah. Right. And like you, you run a successful painting business, but that doesn't mean like you there's there's so much more to learn still. There's so much more to learn. Like I don't run the biggest painting business. I still learn every single day how to run a better painting business. Um, but how humbling a, is it coming in and talking to some people? You're like, and you're just like, oh, regular guys start talking. Oh, what's your business like? Oh, we have 65 in-house painters. Like what? <laughs> no, it was real humbling. The guy who said that he had 1,500 employees as a painting business, uh, Cherry Coatings. You know, and again, it's just like, man, you really it opens up your eyes to the market size. It opens up your eyes to what's what's possible. Um, Limiting beliefs go out of the window. So, so many cool things. Yeah. I think context and seeing what is actually possible. And like, I think the thing that's, I, that I always like go back to is that these people running these huge businesses, like sure they're smart, but they're not that much smarter than me. Yeah. You know, it like gives me the confidence that, hey, I can do that too. And like yeah. shoot, shoot higher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I look at it like, you know, there's some things that people are really good at. Some are good at hiring, some are good at marketing, some are good at sales, and they want to give you their best stuff. And if you just listen, you know, you'll probably get some of that, some of that good stuff. What have you learned putting your painting hat on here? What are some of the takeaways that you're going to go back and implement in your painting business over the coming weeks? Oh, systemize. I sat in on a really good talk um, with uh, Tara. She was the CEO of Fresh Coat. Just, just refreshing my mind on just like creating these SOPs, these processes for everything. But not only that, it's one thing to create them. It's another thing to refine them. So constantly keeping tabs on that. Big businesses have people that just focus on that. And as a small business, it's like, ah, do I allocate my time to like sitting down and mind mapping the different roles in my business that like people are already doing? Like, do I need to do that? And the answer is yes, really. I mean, we know that. Um, but also just to go back into like processes that you're doing and refine them. It's a lot owning a business. So for me, it's just kind of, that's going to be my focus. Um, I think I've got hiring nailed down pretty good. Marketing's nailed down pretty good. Sales, I feel like I'm adequate in. I, you know, we have more of an estimator process rather than a closer process. 
uh, canvassing we don't do. So there's some things, but most importantly, it's going to be SOPs, systems, operations. I think it's easy to get in the, in the cycle of, I don't need these SOPs right now, so I'm not going to build them right now. Like, oh, I have two crews, I have four painters, they're, they're going good, like I'm not hiring right now, so I don't need to focus my time on making these, making these SOPs and documenting these processes. And I find myself in this situation in my own business, like say, you know, we want to document a sales process, but my sales reps are doing great right now. So why I'm not, I don't need to train someone else on this, but getting into that fourth quadrant of product productivity, which is the important, but non urgent things like those are the things that are going to allow you to drive your business forward. So when it, when I do have to hire another sales rep, I want to have all of those systems ready to go. So I'm not scrambling at that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like with uh, the biggest example I can give is with drip jobs. Like, I did all the sales for so long and it was my baby and I didn't want anyone else to sell it. And then I knew I needed to get out of that because I was being stretched so thin. And this is with every role in my business. At one point I thought about that with the painting and then I thought about that with the estimating paint jobs. And really what it was is I was more motivated to free myself that finding the person to replace me was more valuable than putting together the SOP. But the gap between the time that I found them and the time that they started, that was the motivation I used to create the SOP. So, because I wasn't going to bring him into something that I promised was going to be an extraordinary opportunity and not have things laid out for him. So I'm the same way, sitting down and doing paperwork or doing boring stuff with no one who's going to audit that, but you as the business owner, it's like, well, why do I need to do this? I will forgive myself for not doing this. But when you bring on somebody, it creates a, you know, really a need or a desire or some urgency to, to sit down and do it. So I use, I use people as leverage. Yeah. And there's so many tools nowadays to make it easier, right? You can outline your, you can outline your process. And like, as long as you, you get to get the big steps, plug that in a chat GPT to help you expand on it. And like that will like, don't, don't rely on it to create the entire process, but start with your, your outline and then use that to expand and just help you get the writing done and then just go through it and, and fix it to make it your own. Like right. there's, there's so many tools out there. Just be creative. Right. Yeah. Be creative. Um, be resourceful. I spend a lot of my time on product hunt. It's a website that just always shows you the new apps that are being submitted. And, um, you know, that's a good habit to have, you know, see what's out there, see what technology is out there that help that can help you get from point A to point B faster. And, you know, it's a good, good business practice. Sounds good, man. Well, I think, I think, uh, the big man himself, Nick Slavic is about yeah, to take yeah. the stage. So we're going to go catch that talk. Yeah. Thanks for uh, pushing me to set this up today, Tanner. Yeah, brother. You already know. Thanks for listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.